Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our Grand Ages Medieval campaign and see where we go. So we have our trader. He is on his way home. Look at him, he's got his little caravans. That's not possible. Now you can change the way that you're looking. So you can like hold down the middle mouse button to change your view angle and you can actually like check stuff out. You can look at the sheep, do all that deal. Um, I believe there's also a button to reset the camera. Yeah, which uh, I kind of just prefer to use the top down like normal normal view, but if you want to zoom in close and see how the combat's going. Now personally I feel like two horses should be able to kick one one swordsman's butt. Shouldn't be much of a challenge, but we'll see how they do. Madrid's prosperity is moving up. These little dots indicate how prosperous a town is. Um, if you can get to that fourth dot, you know the town's doing well. So we're hoping that uh, his little bit of cloth will help out. And we are still currently lacking labor. So these have upgraded. And right now what's happening is we're gaining workers. So we have currently 151 workers. We need 24 more to fill in the production of all of our buildings. And uh, they're slowly filling in here. I believe once each week they kind of like spread out again. And if you really need to, you can control the maximum number of workers you want working in a place. So if somehow you end up with a huge abundance, you can micro that stuff down. Lost a couple guys again. But hey, we're going to get some goodies. So when he's on auto trade, he is just going through the, uh, the thing and he's buying any excess above two barrels. Essentially, if you, if you are buying when there are less than two barrels worth of stock, you're paying a high, high price. And if you're selling, if there's more than three barrels, you're losing. And all the automatic trade routes just kind of focus on staying close to the middle. You can do manually trading and lose money if you want to, but... So see, we're selling just a little bit of lumber, a little bit of grain, a little bit of fruits, and a little bit of wool. Um, I'd actually kind of prefer to not let him do that, you know, keep the wool, the wood for ourselves, but it's fine. If we queue up another building, it goes to that first. Now, one thing I didn't do at all in the first video that we should probably do is uh, we got to take a look at our development, and we got some other buttons we can click on. So the development is like your tech tree. We've got unit types. We're not really ready to support any military units just yet, so we're not going to do that. Got infrastructure, offers the possibility uh, to do the construction yard to speed up constructions. Storage technology offers the possibility to build an office so towns can create larger stocks of commodities. Um, one thing I do want to do is uh, we're going to press page up to zoom in so we have a bigger interface. I just, I should have done that last video. I like being able to see things on the whole screen. I don't, this is a game where managing the, the interface, this is what you do. This is the whole game right here is playing this. So I like it being big and easy to see everything. Um, so let's do this. For development, we're going to do... I kind of like the idea of doing these where, like, you know, triple honey production, triple, double the production of grain. But for now, let's do, like, speed up any constructions, maybe. With more advanced cart construction, the movement of sellers speeds up. And we can do manual trade routes through the actual values for the trade can be set. Reduces the required workers for forming settler units by 30%. I feel like uh, building this thing would be good. You do get more development points to spend later. Offers the possibility to upgrade trading roads to trading streets. That will increase traveling speed by 30%. So we'll just start off with um, you know faster, faster growth. But we have to build the construction yard for it to actually be of use. That's unfortunate. Let's do um, a little bit of grain bonuses since I know we are doing grain right now. On the other hand, the smithy would allow us to do um, metals and coal, allows us to make tools. Let's just do the brewery and the three field crop rotation to double our production of grain. So we didn't have to upgrade grain yet, but now next week, um, overall production of grain, I think it may have already updated from two to four. Nope. Yeah, it didn't change, so I'm assuming that it's the same. It's still at four. It must have been at two before. So that's good. Let's see if we can upgrade some of these things now. So we have 20. It's going to cost 20. We have 15. Let's uh, let's upgrade that grain production. Because we're going to want to eventually do some beer. And we're going to very quickly want to do another town, I think. What's it going to actually take to get another settler? The sooner we can get more commodities being produced, 
the more prosperity we'll have overall. So, production, uh, we need to go to our town, the inn, settler. It's 100 lumber, 200 bricks, and 60 grain. So, it's gonna be a while. Also, I, I did the thing that allows us to make the workshop. Optimizes the organization of every commission building outside of the town, which increases the speed of all work. By how much? It doesn't say specifically how much. That's too bad. Okay, can you guys win your combat, please? Now, there are cool things you can look at to, like, see how your actual empire is doing. If we go to, um... You can see our list of towns. 695 people, 78% wealth. Again, 80% is the threshold that we want to hit. The balance, you can see, like, cargo capacity, profits from trade, weekly production. You can do it over periods of time. Some people just get all crazy when they see these things, which is quite nice. Competitors. So we are currently at 672 people. Uh, Edward Adams is a village chief. He has 10 winning points. He has 638 people, 10 soldiers. We got one guy up to 1,046 already. Robert Moreau. And one guy at 1,000. I wonder if they started bigger or if they're just better than I am. It's possible. This is the diplomacy thing where you can see the other players. So we are here. And then you can have re relationships with these four going across. And then this would be this guy's relationships with that guy. So it's kind of a nice layout. I, I like the way that that looks. Um, I, I think if you know about them, you can click on it to talk to them there. Uh, we've also got development. No, that's not the one. Uh, units and towns. Trading routes. So we can see information about our trading route. Joaquin Perez has 28 out of 300 of his items. He is on a trade route. He's in Cordoba. Commodity value is 1300. There are two total towns on the route. It takes him eight weeks to make the trip, and we pay him 260 ducats. He has purchased this much, made that much in sales, maintenance, so he's making a very small profit. But here's the thing, you don't always have to be making a profit for him to be worthwhile. Because you also collect taxes. We're collecting 56 revenue each week in taxes on these citizens, so you want more people because you get more taxes. And sometimes it seems like it's better to lose money on your trade routes in order to boost prosperity, than it is to focus on just making money on every trade. So it is a trading game, but again, it's more of a logistics game. Getting stuff where it needs to be. So hopefully this guy can, like, win his combat soon. Are you... Oh, he already did! Damn it! I, uh, I wonder how long he's been sitting there doing that. Anyway, 15,000 ducats. Cool. Uh, go find that. Well, let's scout a little bit more. I didn't realize that the pop-up was gone and that he'd already finished. And hey, it's another bandit. This is a... Spearman. All right. Scouts can take on a spearman, right? Of course they can. And we're at 80% wealth. The citizens are doing magnificently, and all businesses are running more effectively. Labor expenses go down by 5%, and the immigration of free workers has increased by 50%. So we pay less in labor costs, which is awesome. Makes us a big profit. And also, we get more weekly change. We're, we're going to quickly fill in the available slots. Looks like we could upgrade the fruit farm soon, possibly. Um, I feel like, I feel like this, this interface, it, it just takes me time to get used to it. 20 and then in comma 16. I think that this could just be organized better. Like, put the, put the building costs 20 and then like, I don't know, somehow it's just, I don't know, the parentheses, I don't like it. Every time I see it, I have to think for a second on what does this mean? Maybe I'm just kind of slow. That could be the case. Yeah, 40 bricks and we have 30. Let's, uh, let's queue these up again. Because we need lots of bricks in order to build the next town. Because if I remember correctly again, the uh, settler is just mostly bricks and wood with a tiny bit of grain. So we're going to focus on those so we can pop out a bunch of towns. And uh, we'll, we'll fast forward a little bit while this guy's doing his combat. It's down to five strength, but he did succeed. It's the obelisk has... Just 15,000, that's it? Really? We're well, that's... There. Well, I'd prefer to have, like, 300 coal, please. Commodities are Almost awesome. There. Campfire, your men are facing some fully laden carts and a group of traveling merchants who are taking a break. They don't waste any time in offering a trade. Ah, customers, come over here and take a look at my goods. Sadly, only eight honey is left, but if you take everything, I'll give you... I'll make you a good price and I'll deliver it to Madrid. You're gonna sell me eight honey for 6,000. 
Uh, well, I can't... Apparently, I can't do anything on this screen, so... I feel like that's a lot, isn't it? Like, let's say it was 10, that'd be 600 per honey. That seems like it's really expensive. Let's cancel. I don't think honey's worth that much. We have none honey. Honey's worth 1300, yeah. So 8 honey, that, that was only worth like... That's worth nothing. But I suppose if you if you wanted the uh, prosperity bonus, then maybe it'd be worth it. But no, that, that seems like a that? rip off to me. Okay, hidden commodities: two hundred seventy-five fish. See, that's what I like. That that's what gives you lots of bonus. Um... Nearby. I would like to All right. You with an offer. Excellent decision. Sure, we'll accept your transit Let's agreement. Get on with it. Now it does make sense to continue to patrol around because these things will spawn again. So. We could trade more, right? We could we could go for a trade agreement with Porto and with Lisbon. We can also check if we have a guy within range to see what their production is. So this guy's producing coal, wool, beer, cloth, and metalwares. So like that's good. It complements us. Um, we what things that we don't have in Madrid right now is like we don't have we don't have any wine. We, uh, we uh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Production. These are the ones that we produce. This is what we actually have stock of. So we did buy coal. We did buy some cloth from him. And we bought some... We have beer from before. That should last us a little while. Over the next 10 weeks, we'll only use 9 of it. We have a bunch of fish. Apparently, it's either already been sold or... I, I don't know. He couldn't possibly have loaded that up already, did he? Hmm. I think it sold the excess. Because we, we certainly don't have the 275 or whatever it said we had gotten. I don't think there was, like, a backlog on consumption, either. I guess I'm not really sure. Oh, cool, we can rename, rename towns. Okay, so, do we want to upgrade this? Cost 20, we have 40. Um, more grain? Sounds good. So this time we'll do two at once. And the fruit farm, we can't afford to upgrade now. It's fine. I think we're doing fine on fruit. We have 39 in stock, and we consume... Yeah, we, we have 39 in stock. We produce 40 per 10 weeks and consume 18. So we have an abundance of it already. We don't really need more. Um, but these things we just got to continue to upgrade. So grain is good to upgrade because it's going to give us our first settler. It must have sold the excess because we still have... We have four bars worth of fish. It's too bad you can't use fish to build towns. That would be quite nice. Alright, where's our scout at? We can also do control 1 to label him. Now, if we actually had a, a barracks, we could reinforce and get back up to 10 out of 10. Let's but we, we don't, so... We're just going to keep on scouting. Almost there. Maybe, since we're close enough to this, this town, maybe he'll actually do a transit agreement. There's a famine. That's unfortunate. Hmm. We're practically there. We might want to stay away from that town. Nearby. Ah, oh, shoot! We found an old windmill, but we can't reach it. Let's get on with it. I don't think we can beat him with five out of ten strength. Let's disappear. All right, eighty-eight percent wealthy, but now our prosperity is starting to come down. So we got to focus on getting these other things going now as well. Again, I am going to do more bricks, more of that thing. Keep on building this town up, and I think soon we can probably. Yep, there we go. Let's disappear. Got another commodity pile. I think we can uh, start to upgrade. It's nearby. By getting another one. Ooh, pastries. Sorry, we can build another town soon. So we just picked up 100 pastries, and I think this is gonna like right away just change from 100. Or maybe 100 is not over our supply. Oh, you know what it must be? It's because we have a cap on the amount that we can store. I bet that's why it did that, and it just sold the excess at low price. Because there was that building that allows us to store more. With the warehouse, you can specify commodities for resale in the town. Trade routes will then be able to deliver greater quantities to the town that are required than it requires for its own needs. Okay, so that's not it. It was. It was one of the things in development, I think, in infrastructure. Storage technologies offers a possibility to build an office, so towns can create larger stocks. The office. We already have an office. 
It doesn't say here, like, you know, you can only store so much. I don't know. But I'm assuming that's the case. There must be, like, a maximum amount we're allowed to have. We have high production now, but the actual amount that we have... Stock, 66. Yep. Alright. Just gotta get used to the interface. It's a little bit different. You can only have one trader per town, so we can't build another trader just to send new routes. Maybe we should go to, like, Lisbon. Did you find the thing? Let's get on with it. Of course you did. We already talked about that. Let's go see if they produce Let's anything that we it. want. Maybe worth sending that trader over there as well. What do you make? You make honey and f animal... You make fur and pottery. We have no fur. We have no honey. And we could definitely use some pottery. So absolutely, we should increase the route that that guy's going to go on. So if I remember my keyboard shortcuts, I'm still learning them. F1, D, goes to this guy, click on him, escape, plan route, add that. I want to add to it. Add town. Oh, we don't have a trade agreement with them yet. That's right. Okay. So in this case, then, we are going to have to first do Welcome. diplomacy I look forward to marveling at your diplomatic skills oh you wish to make me an offer I don't I don't know if I like your tone of voice there we'll do a trade agreement we'll pay him 5,000 quantity of ducats so that we negotiation skills can get that agreement and now we can go f1d click escape plan route add Lisbon and when you're in the trade route thing you can actually plan so yeah he's gonna grain and bricks we don't care about but these other three we, we need access to those. Um, so it sounds good. Let's send this guy no back problem. up to Porto, see if there's anything else we can get. Porto has things we don't care about, and metals and pastries. Metals and pastries. We have none metals. And pastries we have 55 of. But we have no production of pastries. I think the pastries came from a commodity pile, so... Might not be bad to, uh... To, to get that thing going. The bigger the population of the town, the more stuff you have to have satisfied in order to keep prosperity up. So, it is important that we keep on expanding and doing that stuff. Um, we don't need to upgrade fruit production unless we want to do it for a profit for some reason. We have... Um, we do have some brick and some lumber on in stock, and we have 80 of uh, that in stock. I think it's time to build a new guy. 76 out of 100. 152. Yeah, it's, let's do it. Let's go ahead and we'll recruit our first settler. And from here, um, we'll go and settle somewhere. It'll be great. But before we do that, I'm going to take a short break here. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.